Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be taking a look at the new DJI Mavic A and what we're going to do is do an unboxing, walk through some of its features, show you what's included in the basic package and hopefully give you guys some information. So let's get started. Okay, so when you open the box, the first thing you will find is the Mavic A comes in this nice semi-rigid hard case. Now, DJI include this with both packages, the standard one like this one here and the Fly More combo as well. Further into the box, you will find some of the accessories. In this first box, DJI have also included in the package some propeller guards, so if you are flying indoors or you're flying in a location that you feel you need that extra bit of protection, it's okay. DJI have included these with the Mavic Air as well. You have a spare set of propellers, and then you also have all of the usual safety guidelines which DJI include with their models. Moving further into the box, you will now find the remote controller. And as you can see, this is very similar to the remote that comes with the DJI Mavic Pro and the DJI Spark. However, there are some main differences and we'll talk about these a little bit later. And finally, when you reach into the bottom of the box, the last thing you will pull out is the box that contains the power supply and a range of cable accessories that come with the package. The power supply is very similar to what you get with the DJI Mavic Pro and still includes two USB ports for charging your remote controller and your smart device as well. In the UK, we receive the three pin power plug and then finally, you get a couple of cables and accessory adapters. Now, the first cable is a USB to USB-C cable. Now, DJI have moved to using USB-C on the Mavic Air for its main connection. But don't worry, they do give you a cable just in case you don't have one. Next, there is the connections for attaching your smart device to the remote controller, just like on the Mavic Pro. The final bag contains two spare control sticks because these are now removable on the Mavic Air and a USB to USB-C adapter and that is used for using the USB-C cable to charge your remote controller. However, you can use any normal micro USB cable if you did have a spare one as well. When you open the zip case, the first thing you'll find is the Mavic Air sitting inside folded up. Now the folding design is basically identical to what they did on the DJI Mavic Pro. However, the aircraft itself is a lot smaller, approximately 50% of the size of the Mavic Pro itself. As you can see, it uses standard propellers and not folding ones. However, they still are quick release. So while you don't need to remove them for fitting into the case, you can quickly remove them should you need to. Removing the aircraft from the case, what you will notice is in the bottom of the case there are some indents and these are quite important because it shows you which way the aircraft fits in. There is a picture of the aircraft on the bottom and it is important that you do fit it in with the nose pointing forward and the back of the aircraft this side to ensure that you don't put any pressure and bend the antennas whilst it's in storage. Taking a closer look at the aircraft itself, to unfold it's the same as the Mavic, you would rotate the rear legs outwards first of all, just like that, and flip out the front ones forward like that. A new addition on the Mavic A is the front legs are now folding and to put these down you simply flip them outwards and they flip down to make sure that the front of the aircraft is kept off the deck. Another nice feature is within these front legs is also the radio antennas, which means when you're flying, it's able to pick up the best possible signal because they've been kept away from the aircraft body as much as possible. Just like the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air has front-facing object avoidance sensors. However, DJ have now also added rear-facing object avoidance sensors as well, in addition to the usual visual positioning system mounted on the bottom. On this visual positioning system, they have now moved over to using infrared sensors rather than the ultrasonic ones they've used in the past that allow it to have slightly better performance. Located on the rear of the aircraft between the two object avoidance sensors is the rear multifunction button and LED. This gives you your aircraft status as well as allowing you to set the Wi-Fi mode and also putting the aircraft into smart capture mode for gesture control. Above this is a flap which contains the USB port and the micro SD card slot. As I said, the USB port on the Mavic Air is a USB-C connection and this is the first time that they've used this on one of their aircraft. On the Mavic Air, the battery is located on the bottom and it uses two sliding latches to hold it in place. To remove, you would simply slide them down and it releases the battery and it pops forward. 
As part of this mechanism, the battery does actually slot into the back of the aircraft, making it more secure. In addition to this, DJI have also added a new safety feature that if the battery is not locked in place correctly, it will stop the aircraft from flying. The battery itself is a all new 3S pack and is not compatible with any of the other models. It still contains the usual 4 LED power meter as well as the power button to turn the aircraft on. To fit the battery in place you would simply slot it into the back of the aircraft, push it forward until it locks and two little red indicators will disappear telling you that it is correctly in place. Moving round to the front of the aircraft you will see the gimbal guard and this is an all new design. This is far easier to fit on the Mavic Air than any previous DJI model I have owned. To remove it you would simply press the two latches like that, this little flap flips up and it slides off forward to reveal the three axis stabilised camera. The camera itself is the same size sensor as you have on the Mavic Pro which is 12 megapixel with a 24mm lens. This time it uses a fixed focus, which means you don't have to worry about making sure you get the focus right when trying to get those great shots. Alongside this new camera, DJI have added a lot more processing, which means it's now able to record in 4K 30 frames a second at 100 megabytes a second. Next to this, it can also do 2.7K in 60 frames a second and 1080p in up to 120 frames a second. Because of this new additional processing, they've also added a new 32 megapixel pano sphere mode, which means the aircraft takes a range of 360 degree photos and stitches them directly on board the aircraft itself, which means you don't have to use any external software. These 360 degree panos can be uploaded online to give you that immersive 360 degree view. These 360 degree panos can also be viewed within the DJI goggles and alongside the head tracking means you can use them to look around in the 3D world that you've just created. Because of the new onboard processing, the Mavic Air has something called Flight Autonomy 2.0. This is an upgraded set of safety features using the object avoidance sensors and it's now able to create a 3D map of the environment around it. APAS means the Mavic Air can now automatically navigate around objects without user input and Vision Compass means when the magnetic compass isn't performing 100% it's able then to use the cameras to maintain its direction. Another nice addition is DJI have included 8GB of internal storage so if you do leave your SD card at home you're still able to get that great shot. As mentioned the propellers are quick release, to remove them you simply hold the motor, rotate the propeller and they pop off like, just like they do on the Mavic Pro. To refit it's just the reverse of the operation by pushing them down and rotating and they lock in place. Next we're taking a look at the remote controller and the first thing you'll notice is that there are no sticks attached because on the Mavic Ease remote they are removable. DJI have stored these in the base of the remote control under the arms and to fit them you would simply remove and screw them in place nice and easily as that. And as I mentioned earlier, these sticks ha also have a spare set included with the package as well, just in case you lose some. Looking over the remote itself, you will see on the front, you have the usual set of function buttons. You have return to home in the top left corner, pause, the sport mode switch in the center, a programmable function button here, and then the power button up here. When you press the power button, you still have the four LED battery meter as well. The top buttons, you have the shutter button, a programmable function button, the camera record button, and the usual gimbal control up here on the left. There are no function buttons on the rear, however, you will notice that there is a USB port on the bottom. This means this aircraft uses a USB connection just like the Mavic Pro to connect to your smart device. You have the same USB port on the side as on the Mavic Pro, and you have the second port on the bottom. Unlike the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air does not use OcuSync, it uses something DJI called Enhanced Wi-Fi. This new version of Wi-Fi means DJI have stated you are able to get a range of up to 4km in FCC and 2km in CE. Whilst this is Wi-Fi, it does still have a 720p HD low latency connection and in my experience the connection is actually extremely stable and for general use in an aircraft of this size it is more than adequate for what most people want. I've not had any problems flying behind buildings or anything that gives obstruction and whilst it may not give the absolute range that the Mavic Pro does, whilst it is a version of Wi-Fi, it is enhanced and it certainly provides a much better connection than you would see on the DJI Spark or the Phantom 3 standard. Another couple of things DJI have done on the remote is they've increased the width of the device holder which means you're able to get slightly larger phones in compared to before and tablets also slip in a little bit easier. 
Overall, the Mavic Air is a really nice addition to the DJI lineup. Whilst it was never intended to replace the Mavic Pro, it does have a host of features that, in my opinion, make it a better aircraft. Being roughly half the size means it's much more portable. The camera with that new 100 megabytes a second and onboard processing means it offers some really crisp and colourful footage. And in my opinion, there is far less Moya and digital artefacts in the H.264 compression. The upgraded safety features with rear object avoidance sensors, APAS and the additional onboard processing means this Mavic is extremely stable in flight and in my opinion is one of DJI's most stable aircraft to date. In sport mode the gimbal is restricted to FPV mode but the aircraft is faster than both the Mavic Pro and the DJI Spark. Overall this is an extremely impressive little aircraft and in my opinion probably the best addition to the lineup DJI have made in quite some time, especially since the Mavic Pro. The footage is better than the Mavic in my opinion with that extra 100 megabytes a second data rate means you get less Moya and the images look far more crisp. Flight time is shorter than the Mavic however that is a small trade off being 50% of its size. The additional safety features such as APAS, upgraded active track and the Flight Autonomy 2.0 means this aircraft is extremely stable in the air and is one of the best I have flown to date. Overall, if you're looking for a new aircraft, the Mavic Air is the place to go. If you're looking at the Pro, I would strongly suggest looking at this one because there really is nothing not to like about it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will do another one again soon.